This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Let's say we have a two-player game in which both players take turns placing coins on a round table one at a time. Now, you cannot move an already placed coin. We'll assume if it balances on the table, then it's glued or something. And also, no overlap is allowed. The first person to not be able to place a coin that balances on the table loses. The question is, do you want to go first or second in this game, and what would be the ideal strategy? Well, it turns out you can always win this game if you go first by exploiting the symmetry of the table. And the strategy is simple. On your first turn, place a coin in the center of the table. Then whatever the next player does, you just mirror that, placing your coin on the opposite side of that center, and you do this every time. Since you're mirroring them, then if they have an open spot, you guaranteed will as well. So they'll be the first to eventually run out of places to put a coin, and you will win. Now here's another fairly simple puzzle, and then it'll get more difficult. Let's say you have a pile of 10 coins and another pile of 15. You and your opponent take turns removing as many of those coins as you want, but only from one pile at a time. So they could remove 3 from the left, then you could remove 7 from the right, they remove 1 from the right, and so on. Whoever takes the last coin, leaving none left, wins. So if you take an entire pile, then the other person just removes the other and they win. So again, would you rather go first or second here, and what's the strategy? This is another one you can always win if you go first. The first move is take away 5 coins from the bigger pile, or in more general terms, make the two stacks even in number. Then whatever your opponent does, you just mirror it with the other pile. They take 3 from the left, you take 3 from the right. They counter with 2 from the right, you take 2 from the left. Eventually they'll have to remove the last of one pile, and you'll mirror by removing the last from the other, winning you the game. And you'll notice if the stack started out equal in number, then you'd win if you go second, since you just mirror from this point. Now here's a more difficult problem some of you may have heard of before, but it's probably my favorite in this video. For this one you have a rope that is 1 meter long, and 50 ants are randomly placed along that rope, each facing either left or right, which is chosen randomly. I'm only showing a few of those ants or else it would look crazy, but assume there's 50. Then all of the ants start walking at a rate of 1 meter per minute, so one ant could walk the entire rope in one minute. But when any two ants meet, they immediately switch directions and start walking the other way, and this process continues over and over. The question is, how long is it until we know for sure that all the ants are off the rope? The cleverness of this question again comes from symmetry, in that two ants essentially bouncing off one another is no different than them just passing through each other. Either way, you still end with the same two ants walking the same speed, one going to the right and one to the left. So we can look at this problem as if the ants just pass through one another. Then at the max it would take one minute before all ants are off the rope, or the time it would take for an ant starting at one side to get to the other. And now time for definitely the most technical question. In a video I made a while ago, I discussed the mathematics behind Peg Solitaire, a game where you start with a board of pegs and one open spot. You can jump one peg at a time, then you remove that jump peg, and this continues where the goal is to finish with one peg left. That was very much based on symmetry, but let's put a little twist on the problem. Let's say we have a checkerboard of pegs covering only the black tiles except for this one. Now you're only allowed to jump diagonally, kind of like checkers, and once a peg is jumped over, it gets removed. And the question is, is this game possible to win, meaning you end with a single peg left, and whether it's possible or not, how can this game end? Like what would be the final tile or tiles that would still be occupied? Here we actually got pretty close to winning, but there's two pegs left and I can't jump either because they aren't diagonal from one another. This is very similar to that older video and it comes down to group theory, or more specifically the Klein group. Completely ignoring peg solitaire, let's say you have a 2x2 board. You start here on tile A, 
and you can do one of four moves at a time. You're allowed to move horizontally by one tile, which I'll call H. You can move vertically, which I'll call V. You can move diagonally or D. And you can do nothing or N. Now, notice when we apply the same move twice, it's the same as doing nothing. If we do a horizontal move, then another, that's the same as just staying where we began. Same goes for a vertical move and a diagonal one. Mathematically, this can be written as two of the same moves equals the do nothing move. Then the next thing to notice is that any two different moves yields the third if we ignore N. So like a horizontal move, then a vertical move is the same as just a diagonal move, which can be written like this. It's easy to see this is true for any combination of moves. And by the way, flipping the order of these doesn't matter. Then lastly, we just have to note that doing some move along with doing nothing is the same as, well, just doing that move. So these four possible moves, given everything we've discussed, form the Klein 4 group. Usually an explanation of the Klein 4 group is more generic and technical, but all of this says exactly what we just saw. Like the combination of any two moves, excluding N, yields the third, which is also stated down here. And now if you were asked, what is this set of moves going to do? Well, one order doesn't matter, so I can rearrange it like this. And we know that any two of the same moves cancels to doing nothing, which we can ignore. And then lastly, any two different moves yields the third. Thus doing all this will result in the same configuration as doing one vertical move. The cool part of this is this group combination is preserved as we play the solitaire game. For any three diagonal tiles, I'll label them with three different letters. Then we'll put two pegs on the tiles, and these cover H and V, which combine to D. After I do a jump, we remove one peg, and the remaining one is on D, which matches how we started. The product of the occupied tiles did not change after the jump, and that will always be the case. Well, it'll always be the case if we can label the black tiles such that any three consecutive diagonal ones are a different letter, which we can as shown. Putting all the pegs on the board, you'll find the occupied tiles would be all of these letters. We can cancel every pair since that yields the do nothing letter. And we're left with this here. Again, any two different letters combined to the third. And the same letter twice is the same as doing nothing or N. And remember, this is preserved. So what we just found is that as we play the game, the product of all the occupied tiles is N. And that means we can't win this game. However it ends, the product of those occupied spots will be N. But there's no single N spot. Thus we can't end with one peg left on the board, which would be how we win the game. There has to be guaranteed more than one, like you see here. This tells us that not only is it impossible to win the game if this is our blank spot, but also if any of these are the blank spots. Because if we make this, for example, initially the empty tile, then just turn the board and it yields the exact same game as before. What you just saw was a little taste of the applications of group theory and abstract algebra, a college level math class that does require quite a few prereqs, but the basics can still be understood even if you aren't a math major. The motivation for this last puzzle actually came from Brilliant's group theory course, which I definitely recommend checking out if you found the questions here interesting. In this course, you'll find the original Peg Solitaire game and the mathematics behind it. You'll see how group theory is applied to the Rubik's Cube, which I find to be really interesting. And even if you're new to this subject, they do start with the basics. So you'll learn how symmetry is defined mathematically, what a group actually is, group properties and axioms, and plenty more. The reason I like courses like this is because even though it can be very math heavy, they bring it back to what you can do with this technical knowledge and how it applies to the real world sometimes in very unique ways. And as I always say, I really value the visualizations and animations that allow you to gain that deeper understanding. So whether you wanna learn something new or brush up on old topics, Brilliant has dozens of courses in math, science, and engineering for you to choose from. 
plus the first 200 people to sign up by using the link below or by going to brilliant.org slash zackstar will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.